All right, hello everyone. Um, this is just a, a quick overview of um, the Anson and Forsberg Moving Beyond the Academic Community article. Um, the major reason I'm doing this talk is to help you format it um, or repurpose it toward your um, recommendation report and other things for um, assignment five, the newsletter and such. Um, so this is a good source to get you started on thinking on sort of problems and solutions um, in the workplace and things beyond just language like grammar and paragraphing and stuff like that or even graphic design types of things we've been working on with gridding and visual arrangement and such but rather now we're into cultural issues right people um, being used to doing things one set of ways one set of behaviors and now being asked to do things a different way in a new workplace um, and this focuses on something we've talked about before which is on um, the transition from academic writing into workplace writing before we get started, there's there's many things we can do with this article. Um, and so I just jotted down here on the screen um, three questions that might help you sort of personalize this. Um, when I started including this reading a few years back uh, in the tech writing course, it was because I just wanted to sort of do people the favor of showing them what life might look like um, once they're done with college and they have their first job and that some of the awkward things that might be happening or that some of the questions they might have or the mysterious things going on um, were fairly common, you know, and it is fairly common to feel a bit lost um, when you read the article or if you've already read it, you'll, you'll see that, that there's a number of reasons that people uh, feel a bit overwhelmed or confused um, when they leave college or when they start a new job. Um, and so part of the reason we read this is just to say that that's fine and then we read the article to show that there are some strategies and some things that successful people do to help them work through those confusions, those problems, um, to help themselves acculturate or to make their life easier. So, um, if you just look at the bolded uh, three questions on the screen, um, again, you might just want to say, uh, ask yourself, what struggles did I identify with personally? Um, what type of things would you most likely do at a new job? Um, would you go uh, in search of models to look at? Um, would you be a bit hesitant to contact your supervisors? Uh, are you afraid to ask too many little questions, but therefore maybe you accidentally don't ask the big question that you actually need help with to move forward in your work? Um, if you have a good working relationship with your boss, what does that look like? Um, if you have a boss that's sort of absent, like some of these interns, what are some strategies to still help you be successful, right? So there's a number of ways that you can relate to this article and think of your own identity personally and the type of things that you do. Uh, question two, uh, would you like to use your interview? Um, in this case, we'll say your, your project, because uh, you don't have to interview people for the summer course. Um, but would you like to use your project to learn more about the social adjustments to the workplace and to writing in the workplace? Uh, and I've talked about this previously. Try not to just talk about language and writing and genres, but try to talk about how people interact, um, hierarchical, but also sort of uh, horizontally uh, as well, um, and how people work together in the workplace. That's uh, a large sort of human adjustment that people go through, and the article can help you with that. Um, do you also want to go through the various reasons for each of the interns in the article's expectations, their disorientation, their resolution? We'll look through and kind of identify a few that um, are helpful to you personally, but that also might be helpful to your project as well when we think about the human, cultural, social, social things going on here. I also have this nice list uh, right here of things that you can read for. Um, how does pre-writing happen in the workplace? Um, usually it's just been, you know, in your head in college. Uh, maybe you had some sources, but there are a variety of other things going on. So you might want to read specifically the article for just that one thing, right? Or that'd be one question you could answer. Um, how do novice and expert writers function differently? Um, so we kind of see novices and then we we see how um, their managers or their, their people they work with seem to be taking a different stance or a different approach to writing. So you could read it that way as well. Um, what forms of collaboration exist? What legal and ethical issues pop up? What are the audience's purposes, right? We certainly see um, people wrestling with that in the article. Um, how is genre and genre modeling used in the workplace? So that is how do they recycle older things, how do they use boilerplate, um, and some of the things that we've talked about in the past. What fears and enjoyments, sort of the emotional things, uh, do these people go through? 
Um, what ideas appear in the article that we haven't talked about yet? Again, social cultural issues being the main ones. Um, what expected or unexpected emotional things happen, etc. Um, so you might want to take a minute, um, pause the lecture, and just jot these down, and perhaps these as well. So I'll go ahead and do that now, and we'll move on to the article. So here's our article. There's a few pages of intro um, before this. Here's the actual article, which is a fairly famous article that came out in the early 90s. Um, here we just have sort of a, a warm-up to the intern's experience. This is an ethnographic article, so it just follows um, these interns around as they do what they do. Here's sort of the, the warm-up for the academic part of the article. Here's a listing of our people, if you're tracking them a little bit and trying to get an individual feel for them. I think the important thing, and certainly one thing that you can use for your recommendation reports or even for your newsletter, is this cycle that they come up with that all employees enter New employees enter with certain expectations, right? And they think they're going to be able to do certain things, oftentimes pretty quick. A lot of them went in thinking they could change the organization, they could contribute right away. And oftentimes, research proves um, employees can't do that. Um, one of the most important things for an, a young employee to know or a new employee to know is what they won't be able to do on their own and just sort of acknowledge that um, so that they can then ask for help. Um, most research shows that uh, people don't ask for help often enough um, and that they probably should and it would actually be more expedient, more efficient to do so. Um, after the expectation phase and then the disorientation phase, um, that's where you see their struggles and will identify the various reasons their struggles happen. Some of them are textual, some are cultural. Um, there's also emotional stuff, as the article points out, they feel alienated, right? Um, and so again, this is a fairly common experience amongst new employees. Um, certainly I felt this way even at new jobs uh, that demanded a lot of me. Um, and then finally, transition resolution. How do they solve their problems? When we think of the recommendation report you'll be writing um, that you could um, write in sort of this um, style, certainly it's, um, it is disorientation, which is your problems, a set of problems, and then the transition resolution would become your recommendations in the recommendation report. And a lot of people uh, in the past, a lot of students have chosen to use this setup of sort of the novice to expert transition inside of the recommendation report. All right. So I'll let you read the expectations on your own. Maybe you've read the article, maybe you haven't. But there's a number of expectations they have. Um, usually it's they're excited to get into their field. They feel um, they're ready to go um, after college. And um, they can contribute right away. So we see a variety of expectations here. I think it'll be more important to focus on the reasons for disorientation. What you probably want to do is um, make sure when you read the article, or to turn this lecture off right now and go back and reread the article, and outline somewhere between three and eight reasons that people become disoriented in the workplace. And figure out, are they just textual? They don't know how to write these things. But then are they cultural as well? They don't understand the workplace. Are they rhetorical? They don't understand the audience or the purpose. Um, cultural, again, could also be the differences between college writing and workplace writing, the particular workplace that they're in. So you probably want to do that now. I'll take you through a couple and do a few. But, of course, you should do it on your own to get used to working through this. And that'll help you generate ideas as well for the type of things that you might read your three research sources for, for your recommendation report. So we can see in the first one here, uh, Rachel basically says, I was used to professors telling me exactly what they want, and that doesn't seem to be happening in the workplace. Um, she's tasked with writing a brochure, um, and she says there's only a short note telling me when they needed it done, but no directions or comments on how to do it. So um, this is a difference culturally between education and the workplace. Not to say that that's the way all workplaces function, but certainly it can be. Uh, and so a lack of direction and just some expectation by your, your manager that you're going to know how to do this or that you'll figure it out. Um, and so that's one thing. A lack of direction or guidance um, comes up often inside of here. Um, another one we see Jim here um, is that he couldn't understand why people weren't more sort of excited or enthusiastic about going out and doing this type of thing. 
rather they, I guess maybe they were just there sort of nine to five doing what they needed to do, get, getting their work done, right? And that seemed to be a problem for Jim. So that's more of a cultural expectation. It doesn't have anything to do with the writing, but just sort of the, the um, positive spirit with which one goes into the workplace. But we also see in Jim here uh, that uh, in the past, um, he thought he could find the answer himself, but at this workplace, he has to go to someone for some people, depending on the personality. Again, this could be you or not. Um, you'll have to find someone and ask them and bother them. And you may have to bother them several times a day, and maybe that's what it means to be a new employee, right? Um, so again, that's sort of a cultural or actually a social issue, right? One-on-one -on -one types of things. Um, here's an interesting one that I've always liked. Uh, just your personality. Um, how much should you talk at work, right? How much should you be present? Um, how much should you say during meetings or not say, right? These are all things that I think we reflect on when we think of ourselves in the workplace. Um, and clearly, um, Betsy here uh, is, is struggling with that in the study. Um, so I'll just let you continue to read through these, but you can see it's pretty easy to start to categorize these as sort of rhetorical or writing-based, cultural, social, etc. cetera. So what you want to do is just finish this off and catalog a decent list, categorize uh, these different problems that they have, because some of these will be useful to you personally or for your recommendation report. We see also just uh, quickly Jim's isolation, right? So there's a degree of isolation for all of the interns, but uh, Jim seems to be uh, the greatest. Uh, the frustration with not being able to write faster after they feel they're well practiced, right? Um, we will see eventually in the article um, that people do get faster at writing these type of things. Um, not feeling they have enough time to do this, uh, all these type of things become important um, in the types of problems that they experience. So I moved on now to transition resolution, page 401. Um, and again, what you want to do is just catalog the various ways that they solved their problems or that they helped themselves out. Again, this is a strategy for you in the future uh, if you're entering a new workplace culture, but also this might help um, your recommendation report. Um, Joan, for example, asked for opportunities to gain experience beyond the internship. So going to her boss and saying, hey, I'd like to do these other things, or I'd like to do this type of thing. Is there any way I can help out with that? Um, so Joan seems to have advocated for herself nicely. Um, asking for feedback seems to be important. Asking for more feedback. Um, one thing that research uh, on internships points out is that oftentimes uh, learning in the workplace feels different, happens different um, than in education. And a lot of um, interns actually don't recognize that their bosses are trying to teach them something when their bosses ask them to go for a walk or invite them out for lunch or something like that. Um, the intern sometimes interpreted it as social, but actually it's a moment of learning. That's how you learn in the workplace. You don't sit in front of a chalkboard, right? And so sometimes people uh, misinterpret this when they're, when they're interns. And so one thing to read this for is how people learned in the workplace and where that learning happened, because it happens differently in the workplace. Um, and so certainly asking for more feedback when you feel you're not getting enough can be helpful. Um, if you're comfortable doing that with your boss, right? So that's a second category that we see here. So again, just go through here. There are a number of different categories that are possible, um, but we do see ultimately success for each of these. So when you're done with this article then, you should have your lists of problems, your lists of solutions, so to speak, and then um, you'll be ready to go for your recommendation report. So I think we will leave it at that. Thank you.